Why is stormwater runoff a problem? On the one hand, it's just water, right? But in an urban environment, stormwater runoff is a problem because this is not a forest. This is. Fall brings rain here. It falls from the sky, melts from the mountains, and runs through our communities. Trees, people, and salmon, from the peaks of the mountains to the depths of Puget Sound, we're all connected by the water that runs through this magical place. When salmon return from the ocean, they bring back nutrients that feed the river and forest ecosystems. From mayflies and trout to eagles and bears, even the trees feed on salmon. They also feed us. When we built our cities, we weren't thinking about salmon. And when we covered our cities with concrete and asphalt, the rain could no longer soak down into the forest floor. Instead, the rain picks up toxic pollution from the concrete and asphalt and flushes it right into fish habitat. You could see particulates like sand in stormwater runoff. What you can't see are toxics like fossil fuels, plastics, pesticides, metals, and bacteria. Stormwater runoff is a problem in cities around the world. But here in the Pacific Northwest, it's an acute problem for what remains of our salmon runs. Part of our work has been to see how salmon are affected by urban runoff. Coho salmon, in particular, spend much of their lives in fresh water compared to other types of salmon, and they need cool, clean water to thrive. In a very simple experiment, we collected runoff from a busy highway in Seattle. Some salmon were placed in clean well water, others were placed in the collected stormwater runoff. 100% of the salmon in the stormwater died. The fish in the clean water all lived. So you're seeing 60, 70, 80% of the fish entering that system to spawn are dying before they get a chance to spawn. A normal rate of pre-spawn mortality would be like 1% of the population might die before they get a chance to spawn. We used to think physical habitat restoration was what salmon needed to recover. We now know it's much more complex than that. Controlling sources of toxic chemical runoff into our urban creeks is crucial to the solution. After a grueling journey back to their native stream to spawn, toxic runoff causes the salmon to become slow and disoriented. They lose their ability to swim and eventually expire, the females still full of eggs. And for the few in the next generation that manage to survive. We see effects on the heart, and inside that bubble under the fish is where the heart is developing. And stormwater runoff will cause swelling in that area. That's pericardial edema. And edema happens in humans, too, and it tends to be associated with heart failure. Coho salmon have returned to the Pacific Northwest to spawn for six million years. Given the impacts of urban runoff, is there anything we can do to keep them coming back to developed areas? The answer is yes. Our research team passed stormwater runoff through a simple filtration system made of sand and compost. We then tested whether the water was still toxic to salmon. 100% of the coho salmon tested in the filtered water survived, every time. A soil system like the one we used in our experiments is an example of green infrastructure. Using nature as a filter, diverting runoff and using absorbent soils in this way is not the norm, but it is slowly gaining popularity in cities, and we are showing that it can work. In urban areas, green infrastructure like rain gardens and green roofs can act as filtration systems, removing toxic pollution from stormwater runoff, preventing it from reaching streams. This is a message I've been speaking about for some time. No one anticipated the intense toxic response that urban stormwater would have on coho salmon, nor how simple it could be to remove that toxicity. Really, it's just helping our hard urban landscape act more like the forest floor, letting the rainwater soak into the soil. It's not like we can tear down all of our cities and return to the forest that was there previously, but I think there's a lot we can do. We can go a long way towards helping these systems act more like the forest. These animals are treasures to us here. 
Economically, culturally, and ecologically, they are critical. But it takes more than will alone. It takes action. We can't afford to lose these species. Their well-being is an indicator of our own well-being as a species. We can't go back, but we can do what must be done now to go forward. <laughs>